You're watching Good Day Siouxland with Mallory Smith, Nick Wilson, and meteorologist Victor Perez. From KCAU 9 News, this is Good Day Siouxland. Good morning. It's 645 on this Thursday morning. I'm Mallory Smith. I'm Victor Perez. All right. Well, this morning we are starting off with a pretty clear, bright morning. I know Nick has the morning off, so maybe he's going to be starting off with a better morning, but it is pretty nice over here. I don't know what more you could ask for. Yeah, we could be seeing a little bit of showers and storms. I think yeah. people would be happy with that. That's but a uh, sunshine clear start would be okay as well. You know, we'll see that most of the area has been going to be a little bit hazy. Looking off into the distance, seeing a little bit of fog develop further east of the viewing area. Normally seeing a little bit more fog out there closer towards the cornfields. As we'll see that winds across the region are flowing out between 5 and 15 miles per hour. Starting to see a few uh, reported above 10 though, but it's looking like it's been of a bit of a lull with northwestern breezes. And uh, as I was talking about the warm weather that's expected over the next uh, week or so, we'll see that the effects of that are going to be present during the Ragbri ride with temperatures that are expected to rise. We'll see that much of the state of Iowa is going to see temperatures rising up to or above 90 degrees. So expect a hot week kicking off on Saturday. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Victor. Well, someone in California is waking up about a billion dollars richer today as a ticket sold in the Golan State ended up matching all of the numbers for last night's Powerball drawing. The jackpot winner is in good company with three winners across the U.S. winning two million dollars and 36 people across the country winning one million dollars. Now that the jackpot has been won, the Powerball top prize goes back down to 20 million dollars. But the Mega Millions prize pool is still on the rise, with Friday's jackpot now estimated at $720 million. If you do decide to buy a ticket, remember it only takes one to win and to always play responsibly. Well, over in Nebraska, a district county judge heard arguments from both sides in the case over the state's ban on most abortions after 12 weeks of pregnancy. The ACLU of Nebraska, on behalf of Planned Parenthood and the state's attorney general's office, presented their arguments for around an hour yesterday. The ACLU asked the court to block enforcement of the abortion ban. They specifically say that LB 574 violates the state's single subject clause due to lawmakers inserting the abortion ban into another bill restricting gender affirming care for transgender youth. On the other side, the Nebraska Attorney General's office is asking the court to dismiss the lawsuit and reject the injunction request. The judge said she would issue a written ruling on the case on a later date. And in eastern Iowa, a criminal investigation is underway in the downtown Davenport apartment building collapse. The DCI says agents began their probe the week after the collapse on May 28th. But this is the first time a criminal investigation into the collapse has been made public. Law enforcement is looking to see if there was negligence leading up to the collapse or if the deaths of three residents were the result of a crime. The city of Davenport and survivors of the collapse have also brought in their own investigators. While well, staying in Iowa, some Hawkeye State residents are reacting to the new state slogan and logo. Since 1999, the Iowa State slogan has been Fields of Opportunities. It's a phrase that welcomed travelers into the state on many road signs. Now the slogan will be changed to Freedom to Flourish. Some people say they like the change and the messaging behind it, but others say they don't think that it's accurate. People are using freedom in some real, what I consider some really crazy ways. You know, the freedom not to read books. You know, the freedom of parents to take away books. No, that's not freedom, you know. So, that's my problem. I think opportunity, a safe place to live. Employment, yep. you've got a lot of employment here. You have the opportunities for that. Um, I think it is a place to flourish. And I think people are finding that out who come from other bigger cities uh, that it is a place. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds announced the changes to the slogan and logo on Tuesday. And elsewhere in Iowa, if you feel like road construction season has been especially rough in the Hawkeye State this year, well, you might just be right. The Iowa Department of Transportation says they've broken the record for the largest amount of money spent on construction in a year. So since July 1st of 2022, they spent more than $1.4 billion on more than 800 projects. More than $274 million has gone to farm-to-market roadways more than 350 million to interstates, 
nearly 27 million to secondary roads and 136 million to urban roads and bridges across the Hawkeye State. And meanwhile, more people have submitted letters of interest for the vacated seat on the Sioux City Community School District's school board. Nine people have applied for the vacancy so far. That's up from four last week. The applicants are looking to fill the seat previously held by Perla Alarcon Flory. If you are interested in throwing your hat into the ring for the position, the deadline to send in a letter of interest is today at 5 p.m. And in lighter news, if today's forecast has you eager to spend some time outside, you might want to check out the grand opening of a new outdoor opportunity in Orange City today, especially if you have kids. They're unveiling a brand new inclusive park known as Puddle Jumper Park. The park is designed with accessibility in mind. It features a zip line and a splash pad, as well as a merry-go-round and other playground equipment that's designed to accommodate those with mobility challenges, including wheelchair users. Puddle Jumper Park is located at the intersection of Lincoln Way and 13th Street, southeast in Orange City, and the public is invited to attending or to attend today's grand opening in ribbon cutting that kicks off at 11 a.m. All right, well, it's time to meet today's stray of the day now. And every day we share a pet picked up by Sioux City Animal Adoption and Rescue who's waiting to go home. Yep, and today we're featuring this cutie Stella, a three to four year old female pit bull mix that weighs about 40 pounds. She was found with several of her friends on the 2200 block of Jennings Street. The rescue says she's a quiet and gentle dog that gets along with people and other dogs. Stella is available for adoption now. And if you lost your pet or if you're looking to adopt or if you'd like to sponsor a pet for adoption, you can visit the rescue's website at SiouxCityAnimalRescue.com. It should be going to volunteer today, so I'll go and verify just how, how gentle sweet. she is. Yeah, you know, just how, how gentle. Pet, I was yeah. wondering, too. I'm like, what does gentle mean? I want to know what that actually means, but it seems like she'd be a sweetheart. Uh, yeah, cute coat, beautiful girl, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like definitely the sweet package, but I know there's a lot of dogs over there, so if she doesn't seem like the one, you can make your way over there today. Yeah, there's still a lot that need homes, so hopefully they can start to not have so many. Yeah, I know. It's been getting, it's been getting, yeah, they've been kind of piling up there. But at least we're going to have some good temperatures for that if you want to make your way down there. Yeah, we're seeing temperatures right now in the 50s and the 60s as well. And we'll see conditions across the area that are expected to be pretty quiet. We've seen the looping radar that's quiet across the region for not only us, but extending through most of South Dakota and Nebraska, though they're starting to see some showers out in eastern Wyoming that will be moving in. And you'll see them here on the Stormcast as they move through central parts and uh, start to uh, increase in strength a little bit. But then they'll push further south as we just get the cloud coverage lasting through the early evening as it clears out for the start of the day tomorrow and we see that those clouds fill out again as some sprinkles try to form as well. Now temperatures today are going to be rising up into the low 80s so more of the same we've been seeing similar temperatures really through most of this week with upper 70s and some low 80s but we'll see that that's going to be changing all soon because we go from low 80s to mid 80s to upper 80s here for Saturday, showing temperatures that get warmer. And then on Sunday, we'll see 90s forecasted through the upcoming week. And it's lasting not only through the work week, but could be seeing some 90s into the weekend as well, as we expect that warm weather to continue. All right, thanks, Victor. Well, now we're going to turn to sports, where state tourney softball and baseball continues in Iowa. Now, Sako has those details in your morning sports wrap. Good morning, Sioux Land. The state baseball and softball semifinals were upon us in Carroll and Fort Dodge yesterday. And for Remsen St. Mary's, it's familiar territory. The Hawks made its eighth straight state trip, seven of those going to the semis, aiming to overpower Linville Sully in yesterday's Class 1A semis. Two-seed Hawks were the state runners-up a year ago, two wins out from ultimate redemption. No score in the bottom of two. Leave it to lefty Colin Homan. Sophomore with a deep drive to left center. That's a stand-up double, getting RSM in scoring position. All kinds of fired up. Moments later, it's Landon Walshmitt. He woke up feeling clutch. There goes one right back to deep center. Drops for another double. More than enough to score home in. RSM on the board first, one zip. And RSM was in good hands on the mound. Kale Ortman holding a run around third. Ends the top of the six with a punch out. But the other Hawks not going away in the seventh. Quarter noun harder reaches safely on the botched ball. Soon moves to third as the game tying run with two outs. But it's Ortman rising above for the full count. Backwards K to end it. Five hits, nine strikeouts.
Hawks and the Kirkwood Baseball Commit's complete game gem. RSM wins a thriller. One zip. Hawks back to where they want to be in Friday's 12 p.m. 1A state title game. And their opponent will be decided right after. Kingsley Pearson and Lisbon Panthers aiming for its first ever trip to a title game. Tied at ones in the bottom of one. Bo Bubke chops one to short. They'll trade an out for the run. KP takes his first lead 2-1. Bottom three now. Lisbon back in front 3-2. But Emerson Pratt comes through with a runner on third. Chopper is bobbled. Everyone's safe. We're all tied up at threes once more. Same score into the top of seven, but Lisbon throws the biggest punch of the night. Luke Zarnecki with two on. Lifts a huge drive to right center. That drops. RBI puts them in front. 4-3. They soon make it 5-3. It's the last chance for KP in the bottom half. But Lisbon closes the doors. KP season ends in the 1A semis 5-3. Panthers finish a great year at 28-3 overall. And over in Fort Dodge, Esterville Lincoln Central embarked into their first Class 3A state semifinal showdown since 2012. And they draw a tall task facing top seed Williamsburg on Kruger Seats Field. But ELC is ready to put together the upset. And ELC exploded for 11 runs in their quarterfinal win over Davis County. Starting off in the bottom of three, Williamsburg up three zip. And they had runners on first and second. Shot goes to Jacelyn Anderson. She tosses to first for the out. Now to the bottom of five. Raiders up six nothing now. Hit goes right to Riley Yeager to the outfield. Batter takes second. Taylor Sanchez round in third. She's coming home. It's now 7-0 Williamsburg. Now to the bottom of six. Still a 7-0 game. Yeager, her pitch just goes a little bit wild here. Ava Hawker on third. Take home and that's all she wrote. As ELC's title run ends there in the semis. 8-0 the final. But they'll contend for third place on Friday at 1 p.m. Now to check at sports. Have a great day, Sue Land. All right, well, now let's take a look at this morning's top stories. It's what you need to know before you go. Well, with Rag Bry number 50 coming up in just a few days, more than 25,000 riders will soon arrive in Sioux City. Many of them will come from out of state or even other countries. But wherever they hail from, some cyclists are in need of some last minute preparations for the journey ahead. Corey Smith, the operations manager with Albright Cycle Shop, says since the route for this year's Rag Bri was announced, they've had roughly 80 customers each day. Typically, it's people wanting their bike checked over to make sure everything's safe for the ride. So make sure their tires aren't going to go flat, make sure all their gears are tuned. So we look at things in finer detail to make sure there's nothing that the customer may have missed as well. Long-time Rag Bri attendees advise first-time cyclists to go at their own pace during the ride and to not overexert themselves. They add that you should always have a plan for what to do if your group of riders gets separated. Meanwhile, due to Rag Bri, there will be some road closures here in Sioux City. Larson Park Road will be closed to everyone except Rag Bri participants. The closure reaches from about 875 feet east of the boat ramp entrance to Virginia Street. That will last from 8 a.m. on Saturday until noon on Sunday to help accommodate Rag Bri camping guests. Meanwhile, D12 Floyd Boulevard from US 75 and Lewis Boulevard Business 75 will be closed from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sunday. That's to provide a safe route for cyclists departing Sioux City as they kick off the ride. Drivers are being asked to use Outer Drive or C80 to get to the north side of the city during the closure. City officials add that the list of closures doesn't only include roads. Uh, the public boat ramp at Chris Larson Park will be closed July 21st through the 23rd. Chris Larson Park, Riverside Park, Cook, and Headington Parks are all going to be off limits to the general public. Those are our designated campgrounds, and we uh, anticipate that we'll need all that green space to be able to accommodate all the people coming to Sioux City to camp and stay overnight that, that day. And for the full list of road closures and more details on RAGBRAI, you can go to our website. That'll be SiouxLandProud.com. And don't forget, KCO9's own Tim Seaman and Sophie Erber will be reporting live on the Rag Bright opening festivities over at the Tyson Event Center. So that will be this Saturday at 6 p.m. right here on Channel 9. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they're going to have some good weather all week. I know they're going to have some warmer weather all week, but they'll be starting off at least cooler. Yeah, so they're going to be starting off with mornings kind of like this one, you know, low 60s. So it could be good conditions. But afterwards, the uh, conditions are expected to get pretty warm. We'll see that low 80s are the highest today. Mid 80s tomorrow, and we see that continue to ramp up as we progress until next midweek when we peak in the upper 80s briefly. That's when we'll start to finally cool down. But Saturday, upper 80s with sunshine. So 
might be a little hot out at the Tyson Event Center, you know, with all that concrete around it. And sunshine in the 80s could be feeling a little warmer on the asphalt. Absolutely. And I was even staring at the next Thursday. The next mm -hmm. Thursday, I'm hoping it goes down a little bit as we continue on with our days. <laughs> yeah, the problem could be, you know, some showers on Wednesday, upper 90s for a few days. Could be feeling well until the 100s. Oh, my goodness. Well, all right. We'll keep checking back with you. But thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your morning.